Okay, so today in this video we're going to talk about parallel circuits. It's a circuit that contains more than one path for the current to flow. If a current or a component is removed, it is possible for the current to take another path to reach the other component. So if we go ahead and we remove this light bulb, there is still this path from positive to negative for the current to flow, so that's why that light will still stay uh, illuminated. So parallel circuit. First thing you got to take, there's a lot on this page. First thing you got to be able to do is look at it and notice that, hey, that's a parallel circuit. And with that, there's a couple things you need to know. Inside of parallel circuit, voltage stays the same. There is a different formula for total resistance. So some calculator punching to be able to put it in there is important, so we'll practice that. But it's the sum of the inverses, inversed. So one over the resistor plus one over the resistor plus one over the resistor. And each one of these resistors has its own voltage and its own current that we will go ahead and talk about. There is a Kirchhoff's current law where the sum of current 1, current 2, and current 3 will equal the total current for that whole circuit itself. So we label them I1, I2, I3, I the current at resistor 3, current at resistor 2, current at resistor 1, and there's a voltage at each one that will stay the same for us. So when we have a parallel circuit, first thing we're going to calculate is the total resistance. So to do so, we're going to take the inverse of the inverses. So 1 over 470 plus 1 over 2200 plus 1 over 3300. Get that answer. Take 1 divided by that answer itself. We get a total resistance of 350. You should start to notice that total resistance is less than any other resistor that we've got there. So as you add resistors in, because you're making your denominator larger, your total resistor is decreasing. So next we want to go ahead and calculate the voltage across each component. Well, it's a parallel circuit, so the voltage at each component is the same, so 15 volts. So at this resistor 1, if we know the voltage and we know the resistance, what can we calculate? We can go ahead and calculate that current. So V equals IR, so I equals V over R. So the voltage at resistor 1 is 15. The resistance is 470 ohms. 15 divided by 470. Move that decimal place three times, which gives us our milliamps. So we've got about 32 amps. Do the same thing at resistor 2. Total voltage over 2.2K. Move that decimal place three times. We've got 6.8 milliamps. Same thing at resistor 3. We've got 4.5 milliamps. So what can we do to check to make sure we've got that total answer? Are all those individual answers correct? We take the sum of all of these should be able to equal that total current. How do we take the total how do we calculate total current? Total voltage divided by total resistance. So total voltage divided by total resistance gave us a total current of 43. 32, 6.8, 4.5, gets us pretty darn close to that 43 milliamps that we're looking for. So using some sig figs and some rounding, it's close enough for us. We can say our works and calculations there are correct. So in a combination circuit, what would happen if we remove light one? Well, there'd be no complete circuit to break, do anything, so the whole system would shut off. How about two? You remove two, you got that outside loop. Move three, you got that inside loop, so things will still work. One last thing to tack on here, electrical power. Electrical power is directly rated the amount of current and voltage within a system. So power is your watts, so your light bulbs that you measure in watts. Your power is equal to your current times your voltage. So p power, current, times, voltage.